Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So I'm really excited about showing you this tutorial today. Uh, before I do that, I'm gonna pick some fresh roses out of my garden and a few hydrangeas grab Tilly and then we'll head into the studio. I just want to let you know that I have a full length video uh, along with a vlog and I'm going to be talking about a bunch of stuff including how you can start and launch your own YouTube channel if you're wondering and some art advice and a little backstory about me and my uh, teaching. So you can go on to Patreon, it's for patrons only. Um, other than that, let's head into the studio and begin this painting. Okay, so we're going to go ahead with this tutorial. I've got an 8x10 primed canvas board. It's been primed with gesso. I've got turquoise. I've got light blue violet. Also phthalo blue. You'll also need some titanium white. And I've got some really nice gold paint here. It's metallic. That's going to give our sand, our beach, a really nice sheen. I'm going to use a little bit of yellow ochre. And I've also got some neon red, sap green, and some magenta. And I'm going to begin with my large flat brush. It's a number 11. I'm going to pick white up first and start spreading that across the top of the canvas. I'll begin adding a little bit of my phthalo blue in with that. Just nice soft strokes back and forth. And then I'm going to start making it lighter as I go down. So I'll be picking up more white. and a little bit of turquoise. This will change the tone up a little bit. And as you can see, I am starting to pull my paintbrush up in a diagonal direction, giving that sky some movement towards the top right. Grab those two colors again, both turquoise and white. And I'm going to bring the sky down a lot lower so that we have that ratio of like 70-30, 70% sky, 30% water and land. So here's going to be our horizon line. I'm just going to start adding a little bit of sunset colors right above it. So some gold, white, neon red. I'm going to wash all of that paint out of my brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my gold, red and white and begin this again. Now the reason why I washed my brush out before is because I still had traces of that turquoise in there and blue and I wanted a nice clean color to work with. And I've got a little bit of yellow ochre mixed in with those other colors. And I'm going to start creating sort of like a backward C here for the beach, this little cove that we've got down here. I'm going to pick up more of my white and my red and just keep continuing to add that until I get the nice brightness that I want. Now I want to make sort of a orangey color, kind of more of a yellowish and blend that in with the blue and the turquoise. And you'll see throughout the video that I blend in um, to the neon red and the white as well. I want there to be gold tones in the sky and down in the beach. Okay, so I'll wash all of that paint out again and dry my brush off. Now I'm going to take gold, red, a little bit of light blue violet, and I'm going to come in with a little bit of 
mountains or land way off into the distance there. This is going to help to create some perspective now. There's also going to be uh, some shadows here right at the shoreline where those gentle waves are coming up onto the sand. So to give that sand that kind of a look that the water's being pulled back in or kind of sucked back in, we're going to pull and flick towards the water. Then I'm going to come around with it, soften it, and then pull again. I'm going to begin adding a little bit of that blue into my beach here. Just to create some soft shadows. And I'll create kind of a yellowy, greeny color here with my gold and my turquoise pulling and flicking and then painting softly back and forth for our tropical Caribbean water. Oh, so I forgot to mention that this painting I'm working on is from a reference photo of mine. Um, my husband and I went um, on a vacation to Cayo Levantado in the Dominican Republic um, well, maybe about 10, 10 years or so ago and we uh, celebrated our anniversary and it was a beautiful beautiful place that I'm now um, going back and looking at those pictures and wanting to paint some of the pictures that I took there so here is the first one and I will have I've got two more on my list that I'll be um, making tutorials out of this month or July I mean so I'm picking up more of my light blue violet and I'm going to add this in the water for shadows both for the lines of the waves that are coming up, as well as maybe some rocks that are under the water. I'm gonna pull a little bit of that gold in with there, or with that blue as well, and then a little bit up on the sand. Back to neon red, white, and gold. A little bit of yellow ochre even in there. The gold and the yellow ochre are very similar um, other than the gold is extremely transparent and it will just leave that beautiful almost sparkly sheen and I really like that for a beach to add to a beach because when the waves are, are pulling back in and the, the sand is wet you get that sort of a satiny shiny look to it and the gold paint really helps to achieve that. So I'm just going to add some more turquoise with a little bit of white here, building up the water some more. Add a little bit of light blue violet in with it. So I'm going to start bringing in my clouds now. I'll first come in with this light blue violet. I've got a little bit of that turquoise in my brush too. I'm just going to work that out because I know I'm going to come over top with a darker color. I want to create kind of a dirty, smoky, grayish, muted color uh, that I'm going to make out of all the other colors that I have here. So blue and red. For some warmth. So I'm going to have two main big clouds here and then I'm going to pull that line underneath so the bumps and all the puffiness are on the top of the cloud and then it's smooth and straight on the bottom. I'm taking red, sap green, gold, a little bit of blue that's in my brush, and I'll start layering this over the clouds. I'm just gonna tap in and dab where I'm gonna have other clouds, smaller ones, 
and a little bit, I'll add a little bit down here as well. This helps with the perspective in our sky. And I'm going to take a little bit of my magenta and mix that in with my green and a little bit of blue. I'm going to come in again, adding some more depth and shadow down here on the bottom. Now if you are having trouble layering your paints because it's too wet underneath, you definitely can oh, wait for it to dry, go back to it, or just have a little ha a hair dryer on hand. Um, but it's a bit warmer in my studio today, so it's drying pretty quickly and I'm able to keep layering over while being able to still blend the paint as well, which is really important. That way you don't get a really streaky look to your sky and your clouds. It's okay if things in the foreground are a little rougher and have harsh uh, strokes and lines in them, but you know, usually for the sky, uh, you want it to be a little bit blurrier and softer. I guess it all depends on what kind of a painter you are and what you want to portray in your artwork. Um, let's just say for this specific painting though, I wanted it to be a little bit softer. So I'm coming in with more of the foreground here, um, a little bit of shadow, and rather than using black, I'm taking magenta blue, maybe some red, and my sap green to create my dark, dark colors here for contrast and for all that foliage on the side and then just a little rock here out in the water. And it's darker on the bottom, more in shadow, so I'm going to build up that shadow there on the bottom as the paint begins to dry. And if it's not dark enough at the end of this video, uh, I might end up using a little bit of Mars Black. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of that dark color that's left in my brush to my clouds. I'm going to wash my brush off and then switch over to a little mop brush here. It's dry and I'm going to barely touch the paint and just create small little circles to gently blend that in and make them look more like soft clouds. Okay, now I want to make a lighter green color. So sap green, gold or yellow ochre and I'm just going to begin tapping in for some foliage. Okay, I'll wash this brush out and we'll switch over to uh, my little round brush that I'm going to be using to flatten out the bottom of this rock here. and make some more of my dark color for my contrast and shadows. It's just still not uh, quite dark enough for me yet, so I'll, I'll let that sit for a little bit and work on some other things. Uh, hopefully it dries a little bit darker. If not, I'll go ahead and use my Mars Black later on. I'm going to come in with a little bit more detail and highlights and shadows here on these clouds. We've got a combination of sap green and magenta, a little bit of my blue violet. Now what I'm going to end up doing here in a little bit is 
adding some light to behind these clouds and in between them I'll be making a warm color a combination of gold white neon red a little bit of yellow ochre I'll add it down here and you'll see in a little bit I'm going to be bringing it up above the top cloud in the middle right underneath So I'm going to go right in between here, little dabs, being careful, kind of just wiggling and pulling my brush around. I want to add that really pretty pinky peachy glow on the tops of these clouds and around them. I'm going to soften these ones up a little bit here. Okay, I'll wash my brush out, dry it off, and then take yellow ochre, white, and a little bit of turquoise. I'm going to kind of just pull that back and forth underneath that big cloud. I'm going to make some more now. And I'm really liking that. I think I want to also bring that up into this blue and in and around all these little clouds. I want the sky to look uh, a lot warmer and softer and more pastel-y like. I'm not too too worried if I go over these little gray darker clouds. I can easily um, bring in some more gray after. But I'm going to kind of outline these now with my light tones here. I'm playing up a little bit more with the neon red and the white. And I'm gently going to just start wiggling and scumbling out the rest of the paint in my brush before I go back for some more. So at times I'm going to use a little bit more of my gold yellow ochre and white and then other times I'll be using a little bit more of my neon red and white. I've got my filbert brush now. This is just a medium sized filbert brush. I'm going to use it for blending. Softening up that color that I added to the sky. Now I'm going to make a light minty color incorporated with a little bit of the yellow ochre this applied lightly over the phthalo blue will give me a very soft, pretty looking sky. Back to my dark grayish color that I made. I'm going to add some more. Right here on the bottom there's, there's a, another little cloud that's kind of attached to this other one and it comes out a little bit lower. So I'm going by my photo. I've got another phone kind of off to the left of me that you guys can't see and it's got my, my image that I'm painting from. So it's actually really small, um, but I'm used to working like that. I don't mind at all. And I didn't wanna put it in um, the filming of this video because I, I think it was just too distracting and I didn't want you guys to get lost trying to you know, maybe zoom in and, and look at what I was painting rather than how I'm painting it. That's the most important thing is watching what I'm doing and learning rather than looking at what I'm trying to paint. So I'm also taking a little bit of phthalo blue, light blue violet with a bit of magenta. If you notice here and adding that little dabs of that to my clouds too really making use out of all the colors I've got on my palette adding as many tones and colors as I can just want to pull and smooth this horizon line in this little uh, island or land that we've got going on back there a little bit more 
I'm gonna scumble off a little bit of this foliage down here as I brought it a little bit too too far out onto the beach so I'm gonna set that back a little further giving us some more beach and then I'm gonna lightly pull some shadows I'm gonna use a little bit of phthalo blue for that just lightly pulling and flicking and each time I do this I'm picking up the wet uh, paint that was there before that sap green and phthalo blue and red I'm gonna tap in my gold right here I absolutely love using gold metallic paint in my landscapes or just anything I'm painting you know when you are uh, looking at it on the wall after you're all done and you hang up your art and the Sun hits it just the right way it really feels like it comes to life it's got uh, such a nice feeling to it when it's it just shines and sparkles like that so I'm just taking a little bit of titanium white now on the tip of my brush and I'm going to add that little foam that you get on the end of each little soft wave and then I'm going to lightly pull and flick this is going to help create that movement in the water and I'm going to add the highlights in the water here from the sun setting giving that water a golden reflection and glow to it on the far left Mixing blue violet with my gold and my white, a little bit of red. I want to make a, a mid tone here, line my brush up just right underneath that white, and then pull. This will give us um, more movement in the water and some shadow. Okay, back to my turquoise. I'll begin layering that over in the water as well. I'm now going to take some blue and red and a little bit of sap green and try to make this area really dark again now that it's had a little bit of time to set and dry. Sometimes when acrylic paint dries, it looks a little bit darker. Um, I'm still not totally sure it's dark enough yet. I'm just going to pull a few more shadows right down here. I'm going to wash my brush off, make sure it's dry and clean, take turquoise and white and make a nice light minty color and I think I'm going to start possibly adding some little rays of sun right here. So I'm liking how this minty turquoise color is looking against the light pink that I have around the top of the clouds. Uh, definitely looks nice blended up towards that or in with that phthalo blue as well. I'm going to add a little bit more, soften the sky. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow ochre and white. Blend that in too. I'm going to add some light right underneath the cloud and then more right on the top, making this a little bit brighter, making these sun rays stand out some more. Now a lot of this might be covered up when I add my palm tree. The big palm tree is going to be right about there, um, but I'm still, I'm still going to do it in hopes that we'll still be able to see a little bit of, of it behind the palm tree. And it's just fun to create and it's a it's a good uh, technique to teach you guys and show you so just having those rays coming above the cloud and then right below can look really pretty and you can use that in any landscape it's so gonna make sure my brush is all clean and I'm gonna go back to a round brush now I'm gonna make a dark color phthalo blue red green and magenta 
I just want to add a little bit of lines and little scoops underneath and on the top of the cloud and then I'm just going to add another little one right in there. I'm going to clean my brush out again and now I want to make uh, that bright pinky color with my neon red and white. Rolling and twisting it on towards the end of my brush. I'm going to very lightly wiggle, tap and drag underneath the cloud and right above it. So you're not going over that little dark shadow we added, you're going right above it. I'm going, to I'm going to continue to do this all around the clouds so that they all kind of have that glowiness about them, sometimes a little bit more gold, sometimes a little bit more pink. Uh, it's up to you guys. You can even uh, do the same thing with light yellow and white. Okay, so I'm going to wash this brush out and I'm going to switch over to my small half inch flat brush. So what I want to do is take some more of my white and my neon red. I'm going to mix the two together and I'm going to begin adding some more sun rays. Now the best brush to use for creating sun rays is a flat brush in my opinion but you can definitely use whatever you find most comfortable with. So with a clean brush, I'm gonna take a little bit of blue violet with my turquoise. And I just want to add a little hint of that right in between the clouds and the trees over here. Now, phthalo, magenta, and turquoise. I'm going to cut right underneath and add a little bit. And you can really see that phthalo showing up and that looks really pretty. So I'm just going to do a few little dabs of that and then bring a sort of a blurry looking cloud that comes right down in here. It's in the photo, my reference photo, and I don't want to leave it out, it really kind of adds to the painting. I'm gonna mix a little bit of red with my sap green, phthalo, all those colors together. And I'm going to begin coming in right here with my first palm tree. Now it comes over in a scoop and then the wind is blowing. We've got that beautiful warm Caribbean breeze blowing. And so we've got a very messy looking palm tree here that might make you guys a little bit nervous to paint. Um, this is the first palm tree I've painted that is going all in one direction like this but it really creates that movement. You can almost feel that breeze blowing. 
So I'm just using my round brush for this. I'm going to bring in a few more little palm trees here. These ones are smaller. So the tree trunk should be skinnier and I end up making this one a little bit too thick. So I will be going back later on. You'll see me go back and uh, kind of fix that. So I'm going to add a few little brush strokes for some little palm leaves on there. Not too much detail. The main focus is going to be this big one right here. And I made that a little bit too thick too. I'm going to have to uh, try to correct that and I'll, I'm not going to leave that out of the video. I'm just going to show you guys how I fix things when they go wrong. So kind of just reworking the shape of the trunk on this tree and then I'm going to wait for it to dry a little bit. So I'm just going to go into the background here and do a couple little skinny lines for those palm trees, creating that distance, making them smaller and smaller. Going into my red, sap green, blue, all these colors will give me that nice dark color that I need for a silhouette, shadow, and a contrast. I think black would just be too harsh because in the reference photo, the photograph that I took, there was still a little bit of color to the trees and the foliage. So now I am getting out my Mars black. I tried not having to use black, but in this case, I really need it to define the shadow and the contrast down at the base where all those bushes and foliage are. I'm going to use, um, as well as the palm leaves, so I'm going to use my mini fan brush, get it wet. I kind of want the bristles to kind of have little spaces in between them, like a comb, so that I'm able to just kind of do this in one stroke. It makes it really easy to create instant palm leaves with a fan brush. A uh, filbert brush works too. I just uh, wanted to do this with my little mini fan brush. I haven't used it in a little while, so I'm going to just line my brush up right here, pull and flick. And go back for more black paint and continue pulling and flicking for these palm leaves. Now it's a very thin layer that I'm applying so it's not too solid and you can still see the sky back there. Uh, unfortunately you can't see all of the sun rays but that's okay. The sun rays weren't in or not in the original photo I took. Um, that was just something that I wanted to add and I think um, had I planned it out a little bit better from the beginning but I wasn't think I wasn't planning on adding the sun rays but if I did this painting again, and I might do it on a larger canvas, I think I will space it out in a way that I can add some sun rays in there that'll really show up. Now what I'm doing is mixing my neon red with my yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of gold, and I wanna do another layer over here to really bring in some heat from this sunset. I just wanna play up a little bit more on the warmth in here, and then add a little bit down in the water I'm going to build up the highlights and that golden reflection here in the water. So it's something I'm going to play around with a little bit um, to get just right. I tend to be a little bit pickier in my paintings when I'm working from a reference photo. Um, that's why I really don't like to paint from a photo. Um, sometimes I don't mind it, um, but it kind of brings out the perfectionist in me and uh, I'm not always a happy painter when I'm like that. Um, but this picture that I took uh, invokes wonderful memories for me of a beautiful place that I was lucky to visit a couple of times and I hope to again someday. So I really don't mind taking the time to get it just right. So kind of just going back and adding a little bit more shadow with that blue. And here I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow ochre with a little bit of black. And I'm going to go and sweep down in this tree trunk. 
I want to make sure it's dark enough where it needs to be uh, and then also add a little suggestion of that pattern that the, the palm tree trunks have on them. Use the very corner of my little flat brush here just to pull and flick out some messy looking little palm leaves. And I'm going to use this light grayish color uh, that I've got left in my brush for some more shadows right against uh, the little foamy part of the water and the waves. I'm going to lighten that up a little bit and add some white to it and see if that's just the right tone that I need so it's not too harsh. I want this still to look very soft and dreamy. Okay, I'm going to finish up that bit of shadow, wash my brush out. I'm going to take some more of my blue, violet, white, and turquoise and add a little bit more here in the water. Uh, I want, it felt like it was too solid, the, the gold kind of highlight that I have on the water, uh, that reflection, so I just want to break that up a little bit and add a few little lines of the turquoise and the light blue, violet in there. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of white now on a clean brush and I'm just going to start tapping in, giving a nice little highlight here to the foam and then I just right here lightly pull and sweep. Okay, I'm going to pick up just a little bit more black now with my mini fan brush and add one more palm leaf right here. Looking back at the photo, I left that one out, I forgot about that. And I'm just going to add a little bit of detail on some of these leaves where they might need a little bit more black and a few little, just a few little lines on these palm leaves where they need it. So I'm thinking about adding some sun rays now down here at the bottom. I just want to check and see if it's dry enough and I'm able to do that. I'm kind of taking a chance because the green and black area on the foliage down there might be uh, kind of wet, but um, I'm pretty impatient. I should take the time to dry it off, but I'm so comfortable where I am and I just want to go with it while I'm thinking about it. So I'm just going to line it up carefully here with a light gold color, white gold, white and yellow ochre. And I think it looks kind of nice. It's very subtle. Um, I need to bring a little bit more light up in here. It's dried a little bit darker. Remember before I added a little bit of light uh, minty turquoise up there. So I'm going to go and add some more again. I want this to have a nice glow about it and be really soft and more pastel. Okay, so with a clean brush, I'm going to go back for my gold and my white, and I'm going to go right underneath this rock here, add a few more little highlights. And the next thing I'm going to do is get a light greeny, yellowy color and pull in some sun rays right here. And I really, really am glad that I did this. I love the way it looks. It was not in, or it is not in the original photograph that I took that I'm painting from, but I think it brings a lot to this painting and the, the atmosphere of this. 
So I'm also going to take a little bit of my light blue violet and my green and possibly some gold in there and yellow ochre just to get a nice light color. And I'm going to make these palm tree trunks a little bit skinnier so that they look more proportionately correct and insignificant and more in the distance. And I've also got to do the same to this one here in the foreground. It had a little bit of a, a lump there that wasn't quite right. So I'm just going to, I don't want to be a perfectionist with this painting, but I, I, there's a few little things in it that I just need to finish before I call this all done. So I fixed that lump in the tree trunk and then I pulled and swept very lightly across to create that little bit of a pattern that the palm tree trunks have by using some yellow ochre and some white. I'm going to go in for my sap green now and yellow ochre, maybe some gold, and just add a little bit of a subtle highlight, this nice gold green or green gold color that I've got here. I'll tap a little bit of that in before I call this painting all done. I think it's all done. <laughs> we'll see. So I'm just going to take a little bit of white and turquoise and kind of make this a bit softer and blurrier right over here. That area was just bugging me a little bit. So I think that looks better. I think I'm overall really happy with how this turned out. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying watching my tutorials lately. I've really been wanting to bring you guys some something different to my channel. And uh, here, I'm just going to try. I'm going to try to add a few little sun rays if I can. Try not to pick up any of that black paint that I've got on that palm leaf there. And I'll pull in, pull in a little bit of that light pink that I made with the neon red and white. There's hints of yellow in my brush too. You can use a bit of gold. The gold and the white together would look really nice too. Um, but yeah, I've been uh, getting out of my comfort zone. I always encourage you guys. I think almost every video I talk about getting out of your comfort zone and doing something that you haven't done before. It's going to help you grow as an artist. It's going to make you more confident and you might surprise yourself and, and realize you enjoy painting something you never thought you would before. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. I want to thank you so much for joining me again today. Please like this video, leave a comment and uh, think about joining my Patreon community. I'd really appreciate it. Um, let me know you guys would like to see more videos, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.